Eight side by side, Jack Oliver and Howard Redhouse, and a wonderful side of the minutes, side by side, minutes, side by side. It may have been out a few years now, but Timex can be rightly proud of what they've achieved here. Hello, Christmas hat. Some commentators have actually said that they don't like the large queue at the 12 o'clock position. I would say stuff that. Timex can rightly be proud of their queue chronograph. <laughs> Retro inspired chronographs. Where do you start? Just popping into my mind, Yemma, Tudor, new offerings from Seiko with a speed timer. Well, today I'm going to take a little deep dive into this little beauty from Timex that won't break the bank. I don't really mess around with unboxings on my videos, we just get straight to it. If this is something that you, you know, if this is the, the sort of format that you like, don't forget to subscribe. Give these videos a like. It all helps. It helps the YouTube algorithm. It helps the YouTube algorithm, so that my little videos don't get lost in the wilderness. So what I'd like to do first, I'm going to split the video into two sections. We'll look at how chronographs work for those of you that don't know, and then I'll take a good look at the specifics of this particular watch. Just for anybody who doesn't know how a chronograph works, well, they were born out of motor racing days and they were used to calculate speed. So that's what the tachy, tachymeter scale around the outside is for. So let's say you know a distance is exactly one mile and a car passes you. As soon as it passes you, you press the top button and you'll see that the chronograph hand starts ticking. And when that car, try to keep it simple, when that car passes, goes through its mile, you would stop, you would look on the tachometer scale and you would see that it's doing 240 miles an hour. It's as simple as that. And then to reset, you press the bottom button there. It really does catch the light, this watch, doesn't it? Let's just play with that chronograph hand again. Let's say a car flies past you and you know it's going to do a mile. Oh, it just goes straight past there. Let's say it's a, a Bugatti Veyron. And you think, I wonder how fast that's going. Flies past. And after 12 seconds, you just stop. Oh, it's done a mile. It's doing 300 miles an hour. Nonsense, utter nonsense, of course, because I think Bugatti Veyron's are still well under 300 miles an hour. Anyway, a side point. Yes, I do know the Veyron has been superseded by the Chiron, but I am stuck in either 2000 or 2011 or 2020. So, you know, just give me a break. So the other dials on here, the small dials, you have your ticking seconds and a rather, is it pointless? I'm not too sure. They all have this uh, 24 hour clock there. So you can see that the time is, well, it's four o'clock in the afternoon. And this uh, bottom dial, if you had the chronograph on for a long period of time, it would start to tot up the minutes as well as the seconds. One handy feature with the chronograph is once you've set the chronograph hand ticking, you can sort of pause it. If you press the bottom button, it does pause. Let's see, you were, you were timing a couple of things. And then if you reinstate it, it jumps to where it would have been and continues. So we'll just do that again. So you stop the first time. And then you're having a chat or something. You repress it and it jumps to where it would have been. So that you can get an overall time for whatever task that you, you're doing. Uh, with some pauses in there. And stop. Reset. Have you noticed the bottom there? Uh, did you see the bottom there? Uh, the bottom dial there. Uh. This is yet another one of those watches that represents amazing bang for buck. 
that just gives a, a wrist presence you could pay 10, 20 times the price of this watch to achieve. Now bear in mind this watch retails for under £300, I think it's £250. Timex have really gone to town to provide you with a quality experience. It comes in lovely packaging, it sits across here under the elastic and it lifts out easily. So what are you actually getting for your £180, US dollars let's say. The watch itself comes in at a very, very sweet spot of wearability. 40mm case. A surprising 14mm thickness. It does fit under a cuff and it doesn't, because it's light, it doesn't feel heavy. I was a little bit surprised at the thickness for a quartz. The lug to lug is 46, so it fits squat, small on the wrist. Now bear in mind this is a light feeling watch. I'm telling you now as I'm wearing it that you can hardly feel it. It does hug the wrist. You can see that there's no overhang even though the case itself is fairly flat. And the lug width is a very strapaholic 18mm. It has some water resistance, 50, 50 meters, which is splash, uh, splash proof really, accidental spillage, you wouldn't go swimming. It is one of those watches that just draws your eye as you walk past it. You do want to go back for a second look. The crystal is a mineral, acrylic sort of crystal rather than sapphire, which gives the dial a lovely warmth and retro feel. That was the way crystals always were before they discovered sapphire and even modern seamasters you can choose to have a mineral crystal on your seamaster uh, speedmaster if you prefer i'm very happy with a mineral domed crystal it will scuff but those scuffs can be buffed out with a tube of poly watch the movement inside is epson sony epson with it's a quartz movement with a five-year battery life and they've thought of everything there. You never have to unscrew the case back. You would just put a coin on the battery cover, unscrew it, replace the battery, and screw it back in. Once every five years. And I would imagine an Epson movement is as reliable and long-lived as any. This is a very, very comfortable thick leather strap. Soft, thick leather. Perfect, really, if you were going to get a leather strap. From the SB Foot Tanning Company. In Minnesota, I've been so impressed with this strap that um, I would actually go to them for other straps. You know, if, it is sometimes a bit of a minefield trying to find a leather strap, generally. And if you find a good one, I'm sure you could approach that company and just order them direct. Drawbacks, not many at this price. But the loom is almost non-existent. It is there. It's rubbish. And the whole watch itself isn't always very easy to read the time. If you look at it straight on there, you pretty much lose the hands, which, you know, it's it's only when you, you move the watch slightly against the light that the hands become quite clear. And the little date window between the four and the five, absolutely fine, N unobtrusive but it is there. The case itself is mainly polished. You'll notice the signed crown. The bezel is polished and there's just some fine brushing to these flat surfaces at the top of the uh, top of the lugs, protecting the lugs there. Well, thanks for watching and staying till the end. If you did, don't forget to visit my channel. There's Lots of other watch review videos on there and also playlists watch collecting as a hobby Seiko binge list It's a bit my channel is becoming a bit of a catalog really that you can just dip in and out of if you've got some time to kill So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next one